So, when we gathered previously, the party made their way and they gathered some fruit, got into a small battle. They had a moment of discussion about where to go next and they decided to head east. They found themselves inside of a tavern. The ladies had themselves a nice small meal while Yashua engaged in his first non-alcoholic drinking contest with a I regret everything. mysterious woman named Roselia. And then later that night, Mel and Drava, mostly Drava, revealed some things to each other. And some things were explained and some reassurance was had. And in the following morning, which is where our scene is opening up, the party exchanged their good mornings, and then a strange black smoke began seeping out from Mel and Yashua's chest, and for some reason, uh, Garland is currently standing behind Dreva. And that is where our scene begins. Being haunted. <laughs> Uh, foot. Wait. Why? What am I doing here? Why am I here? I should be residing in the afterlife. Forget. You. Did you summon me? Wait. <laughs> Who is. Okay. Is this. My granddaughter? As Draver has no idea what the hell is going on as she's trying to uh, understand the confused expression strewn about Yashua's face. And she turns around to see this hulking suit of ghastly looking armor behind her and she jumps backwards. Yeah, okay, hold on. Yashua proceeds to poke his armor. <laughs> you feel a nearly icy cold sensation when your skin makes contact with him. And he looks at you like, what are you doing? Does he ask, what are you doing? No, you can through his eyes with what you can see of them his expression says it all i mean he's wearing a helmet isn't he how can i see his expression you can see his eyes they're in vive <laughs> <laughs> i just continue to you know just try to grab like his shoulder plate but like what does it phase right through uh you can't grip it for very long before you are compelled to pull your hand away from it. Oh. <laughs> so, Garland walks right by you. He walks by Mel and he again questions Drava. Is... Okay, so, so either someone is playing a twisted joke on me or I am standing before my granddaughter of many a centuries difference but I know my kin when I see them as Drava she looks up and Garland into his eyes and she, for whatever reason, reaches out to touch his armor, 
and after she does that she pulls away and she exclaims so that was the reason I had that weird ass dream about a strange man encompassed in armor are you really my grandpa uh, I'm your grandfather of a few centuries ago but yes I am and whatever led you to be here these two have something to do with it yes no <laughs> Yashua just like shaking his head no I didn't do anything <laughs> but you and yours defeated me in battle and portions of my spirit inhabited yours so you do have something to do with whatever this is Joshua just refuses to acknowledge, no, I didn't do anything. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I did use a piece of your armor to upgrade ar my armor, but that's it. <laughs> As any wise warrior would do, he scoffs really, really smugly at hearing that. But regardless, so I have two potential reasons as to why I'm here. Something involving my granddaughter's dream caused me to be here. Or one of you must have been thinking about me in such a manner that caused my spirit to take physical form again. Don't look at me. I just had a dream about vampires and werewolves. After saying that, Drava briefly shudders in place, and Garland takes note of that but doesn't comment on it. So none of you have an explanation. So I mean. Does Maybe this... you wanted to see your granddaughter? While that is true, I don't have a method of doing that because in the afterlife, I don't necessarily think. I just drift. And what did that fool say to me one time? I was once told something about if a spirit is strong enough, they can and will retain their memories in one way or another. But as for existing once again in the physical mortal plane, I know not. Regardless, I don't necessarily think I should be here, but I will say that it was nice seeing my granddaughter in a conscious state where I can speak with her, albeit briefly. And as Garland says that, his body so to say, starts to flicker from existence again as he is starting to phase out in a way. But he, he's just standing there like nothing's happening to him. And Drava, she points this out to him in a matter of gut, grand, grand, grandfather, what What's happening to you? What do you mean? He's losing reception. Oh, <laughs> I... I suppose I'm returning to from whence I came for the second time. 
and the longer he keeps talking the more he begins to fade away but that smoke that came out of <clears throat> uh, Yashua and Mel is starting to flow back into them and Garland doesn't really say much he just chuckles and the last thing he says before he completely fades away is well I suppose that whatever this is if it happened once it'll happen again so that the next time you two somehow summon me he turns to Yashua and Mel I'll be expecting a fight and with that he completely fades away again and Drava speaks up wow that was strange uh huh was when when you all fought him the first time was he that imposing and threatening Yashua sweats yes very huh that's um uh... I think one of the most imposing figures I've ever seen in my career well oh, I suppose if that ever happens again I'll maybe have a chance to sit down and talk to him yes you should definitely invite that big hulking well, the issue, into a tea party <laughs> the issue is that none of us know how we did it I just know that I had a dream about meeting my grandparents but I highly doubt that had anything to do with it Perhaps it has something to do with desires. Probably. Anyway, it's morning time and we have to keep moving. So let's let's get a move on, shall we? Yeah, let's. I wonder if how many days are we off to re-reach what was that place called again? Uh Last... Angela said it would be a few days walking time but we've covered quite a bit of distance since we flew most of the way so I would say for our destination to meet our contact we all things considered, if it goes well, we should probably get there today. Hmm. Alright. Uh. We don't have to restock on anything, do we? Looks like we still have a good amount of supplies left. Oh, no. We've, we've got plenty of supplies. Don't, don't worry about that. Yeah, I remember you buying a truckload. It does not help. It does not hurt to be overprepared. Okay. No, no, you're right. Yeah, yeah. All right. So, Drava twirls on her heels, and she borderline jogs out of the tavern. In a hurry. And as you are following behind her. You and Rosalia make eye contact again before she waves you goodbye. That all oh. said, I will change the map. Put you guys here. Oh my god, it's not rendered. It's all foggy. You're joking, right? 
It's <laughs> right there. so foggy. I can't see shit. What do you mean it's foggy? It shouldn't be foggy. It's render. It, like it's not rendering all the way. Mine rendered. So. Oh, there we go. It rendered. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I got nervous. I'm all like, is this supposed to be foggy? So anyway. Uh, let me just turn this on. Look at that pretty rock. Alright, so. The party is making their way through these grass plains. See a couple of tall rocks that, if sculpted properly, they could very well be monuments. The grass is up to Drava's hip, so it's pretty darn tall, but you all are walking along a path that doesn't involve you going into the grass. We could get ambushed by goblins here. Or tiny people. Uh, as you all are continuing on your way, you you hear faint but what sounds like a bird chirping somewhere and it it sounds like it's coming from all directions but it is just a singular voice that you hear so if you want to look for where the chirping is coming from, please roll investigation. Investigation. Okay, so Drava, she takes a moment to look around the place. And she thinks that the chirping is coming from somewhere in front of her. So that's where she's going to go look. As for Yashua, you focus in on where the chirping could be coming from. And it sounds like it's coming from behind you behind you to your left. Gonna hop on this rock. Okay. So I'm going to have Drava roll I'm gonna have her roll nature for scraping through the grass and other plants nearby. And she gets poison ivy. Okay, so, as she is combing through the grass and whatnot, she happens upon a small bush of wildly potent uh, medicinal herbs, all of which are beneficial in some way, shape, or form, and they are a variety of different colors. So, for simplicity's sake, I will... Bush of medicinal red herbs. There we go. And she pockets that and continues on about trying to find where this chirping noise could be. Why are we looking for the chirping noise? Moving on. <laughs> I was just thinking about this. I'm like, why are we looking for this bird now? Uh, you are standing atop of rocks. So I will have you roll. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, yeah, roll perception. As I'm going to turn my air conditioner off because it is making my nose act funny. Why 
twenty two. Okay, yeah, twenty two, okay. You look to your right and you see what could be a bird, but upon further inspection when you stand, you see you see something red. It's no bigger than a basketball, but you do see the object in your sights moving around. <laughs> Can I activate Falcon armor full thrust and try to capture it? Um... Do you want to set all this grass on fire? Man, uh, uh, it's tempting, though. I'm standing on a rock, though. But you said you wanted to activate the Falcon Armor, hit full throttle, and then go down into the grass to try to catch whatever this is. Fine. I'll... I'll sneak. Okay. Oh, um, fuck. I'm gonna have to roll for stealth. Yep. Oh, shit. So they say the bird was around here somewhere. Yes. If the bird flies up, I'm chasing after it. Okay. So, you managed to hide your presence well enough to not disturb the creature in your sights, and I will have you roll animal handling to try to capture it. Wait, animal handling? Yep. That's a roll? Yep. Right. So you approach oh, the small creature and you manage to pick it up and upon close inspection it is a baby red chocobo. And it you look at it and it looks at you and you can tell that by its expression and by how light it is, it it looks pretty disheveled and pretty hungry. Take all the fish I have. I'm gonna feed it. It's gonna be my new best friend. Uh it's very malnourished. Say that again, I had to mute myself to sneeze. I'm gonna feed the chocobo the fish I have. Okay. And it will become my new best friend. Are you going to cook the fish or just give it to him <sighs> raw? I don't know if it likes its food raw or... Well, it's a chocobo. I don't know if it likes its fish raw or not. Cook one. <laughs> Make it choose. Actually, Yashua just, you know, baby talks to Chocobo like it's like a like a dog and just and just gives him the option. Would you like warm fish or raw fish? Uh, it's so just like stroking the Chocobo. Having overheard your baby talk, Drava. Oh, my God. Uh, shuffles her way through the grass and she's like, what did you find? Oh my god. It's mine. No, 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 no. I don't want to take it from it. I just... I didn't see. think I'd see a baby red chocobo. You know how smart these little guys are? Also, uh, you don't have to 
baby talk to it. It can understand you very well. But look how small it is. It's a child and needs protection. True, it is a little cutie. But, uh... Just look at it as he, like, you know, just puts the chocobo in front of her. Look how cute this thing is. You can't say no. She rips the chocobos from your hand and starts cradling it and kissing it on the forehead. Oh my god. And you after, see what I mean? After, after about uh, three minutes of that, she lets out a very deep exhale and she says, all right, now that I've gotten that out of my system, um, let's at least get out of the grass and feed it, I guess. So, you two move out of the grass and... Drevo pulls one of the rocks over to where you are to make a makeshift table and such. And she she takes her bag off of her and she takes out a couple of different salts and whatnot and she places the two fish that you fished up yesterday and she asked, do you want the fish cooked or do you want it not cooked? And the chocobo was eyeing both the yellowtail and the swordtail fish. And it jumps up and it pecks at the yellowtail and it opens his mouth and a little bit of fire comes out. Oh, he just cooks it. <laughs> No, 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 he, he raised his mouth to you all and breathed far saying to cook it. Ah. Okay, so, let's see. It's so smart. He needs a good name. Hmm. Wait, did it just breathe fire? Yeah. Roll sleight of hand for me. You said this was a what? Chocobo? Mm-hmm. What is that? Some kind of wyvern? Huh? No, it's a... Uh, um... Well, the... Uh, simple explanation is that they are giant mostly terrestrial based birds um, some people have them as pets some people use them as chariots in the battle even though regular Ooh. horses exist and uh, of course. some people like to breed and race them also Yasha with that sleight of hand roll as you are engaging in conversation with Mel uh, you have effectively cut up the fish into enough pieces to feed all of you. As Drake I'm not is... eating my fish. My share is going to the chocobo. Okay. Well, Drava casts a very small fire spell onto the fish after seasoning it, and within seconds, it is fully cooked and ready to eat. And the chocobo is very, very appreciative as it cannot stop uh, waving side to side in place as it gorges itself on the fish. It's borderline inhaling the fish as it eats. Small boy hungry. And then... <clears throat> After it finishes eating, it lets out a, a small burp, and then it jumps into the air and 
spins around as if it, it, it's trying to tell you something. I will have you roll... Roll intelligence. Watch, wow, it's gonna be a bad roll. I mean, don't jinx yourself. I don't believe in jinxing. I say that and it's gonna be awful, watch. <laughs> ah, well... Shit. Shit. Uh... You... Oh, fail oh. to understand what it's trying to tell you as you are just entertained by watching it spin around. Drava, on the other hand, she is able to figure out that by the way it's spinning, it's trying to tell us that it got unfortunately caught in a tornado and was injured to the point where for a while it couldn't walk and it was getting really really hungry and thirsty and as such Dreva pulls out a, a bottle of water and one of the iron mugs that she purchased and pours about half the bottle into it as Jokobo very quickly wastes no time drinking the water down all the way to the bottom And, ah, so he was thirsty. And after doing such, it plops backwards and sits down and looks at the two of you with a smile on its face. As if it's saying thank you for the meal and the food. And afterwards, it looks around it stands to its feet and it flaps its <clears throat> its wings in a manner of it trying to take flight and after a few seconds of it it sure does find itself in the air hovering right in front of you do I'm confused as fuck because Chocobos have large bodies. Their wings are really small. And I'm, uh, and I'm over here thinking, how in the fuck? Oh, dude, Chocobos fly all the time. I'm over here looking at it at a scientific per perspective. I'm all like, your body's huge. How? Baby Chocobos are basically the same size body and legs and head. They're different than the full size ones. <laughs> Well, my character doesn't know that. True. As I don't... as it is flying circles around Yashua and Drava's face, Drava takes note of the shade of red that it is and the fact that it was able to breathe fire, albeit not a lot of it, but... She, she tells you that uh, certain red chocobos have an affinity for magic and whatnot. As if I remember right from the history book that I read, their bodies are more in line with the natural energies of the world. And as such, they can once they become of age, freely tapped into it whenever. But, uh, the worst thing a person could do is piss off a red chocobo, because, well, there are some in history that happen to know the meteor spell, and, well, that's not a good time for anyone. Meteor spell? So, what? So what, you're saying that these things could drop a comet on you? Yes. Several. Oh. Without even trying. Oh. This this little bird has that kind of arsenal? 
Yeah, and the the darker the red they are, the more, more dangerous they could be if angered. Especially if they perceive whatever's in front of them as a threat. So, I guess it's a good thing we helped this little guy. Because chocobos are, they're kind of like dogs when it comes to companions. And uh, if they happen to like someone, they typically won't attack them, if given the chance. Typically. Yeah. Either way, I feel I feel pretty good about helping this little guy. And I hope that he can get back to uh, his flock. And once Drava says that, it stops flying circles and it nods in place. Well, it nods to the both of you. And it's communicating that that's what it's going to do next. And it... <clears throat> It begins happily chirping to the both of you before it inevitably flies away. But it turns around and somehow uses one of its wings to wave goodbye at, at you while it's maintaining perfect flight with the other one. Yash flies like confused. How is it doing that? <laughs> And after doing that, I will have you increase your charisma by one, and your empathy ring increases by one stage. Woo! Alright. So, Driva gets up from where she's sitting, she puts the rock back. And with a smile on her face, she starts hopping and skipping along the pathway once again. While she's doing that, Yasho is magnifying his eyes to take a closer look at the chocobo from a distance while it's flying away. I want one. That's the last thing he says before he loses sight of it. <laughs> I want one. <laughs> I want one. It's time once again to change the map. Okay. Where so, we start off here? Huh? Yeah. Okay. So you two keep going along the pathway. And you find yourself not necessarily at a forest of sorts, but it's really obvious by the assuming tire tracks along the ground that people come this way pretty frequently. And looking up, you can see some smoke as if a fire has been lit but hasn't been put out yet. You hear Ooh, a few voices... A Assuming them to be uh, animal people or other humans nearby as you continue along your path. <sighs> well, I'm over here thinking to myself, I wonder how much chocobo costs. As Drava is walking alongside you, you happen to notice that she she can walk and draw at the same time, and she has, while not a perfect sketch, she has drawn the chocobo that you two have parted ways with. I'm in. That's impressive. <laughs> You're like walking and drawing at the same time. 
without crashing into anything. Huh? The what? Oh, I, uh... I used to do this a lot back in where I came from, and it helped me out when I was bored, and it it kind of helped me with, uh, what do you call it? Situational awareness? Because, uh, when I first started out, I would walk into everything, believe me. But the more I did it, the more I... I guess in a way figured out how to expand my own personal bubble and I don't really walk into much anything anymore at least when I do this it's kind of like uh uh how do you call it opening your third eye I guess opening your third eye huh that's uh that's interesting. First time I hear of this. Yeah, it's, uh... It's... Pretty nifty. If I say so. Well, if it increases your senses, then that's beneficial. Oh, yeah. Without a doubt. And... Well... Speaking of... Senses... She <clears throat> she puts her drawing away and she draws her staff and before you can even say anything, she casted Blizzard directly in front of her. Well, directly in front of her and to her right over here. And out from the tree comes a bear and that bear is kind of pissed off that it was spotted and now it is a fighting time a bear yeah these these things are they aren't as bright as those goblins and orcs that we fought earlier but they are pretty good at sneaking up on people when it when they assume their target isn't paying any attention anyway uh, I got the first hit on it so do you take care of you do your thing Oh, this is good timing. Always running out of jerky, anyways. Alright. The bear has currently suffered. Excuse me. The bear has currently suffered. Uh, 208 points of damage. Is this the same bear as, la like, we fought several sessions? Air bear? It's the same icon, but not the same exact bear. Oh. I was hoping to make a bigger coat. It's your turn. Can I glare daggers at the bear? You want to intimidate the bear? I want to intimidate the bear. No, like... Just to let him know that he's the prey, not us. Roll intimidation. All right. Uh, you stare the bear dead in the eyes, and it backs up a little bit. <laughs> he backs up, I walk closer. <laughs> Wait, hold on. I walk closer. You see Yasha doing the jazz hands? 
So you're, he's you're like, basically like... He's like rubbing his hands together. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you're Dio walking to the bear, but that works too. I'm Dio walking to the bear. That's better, yes. <laughs> Fucking Dre was like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah, why are you walking like that? You know yeah. what? You, you... As long as the bear dies, I don't care how you walk. As you... weird as it is. Yashua just ignores Dre because he's like... He's like dead focused on the fucking bear. Jojo music in the background. Yeah, okay. Can I summon a concrete roller? No. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely not. Like meat's back on the menu. Uh, one, two, three, four. Okay, let's see here. We still have five actions, right? Yeah. You ambushed the bear. The bear did not ambush you. Okay. Now with that. For my final action. Since I'm going up close and personal. I'm gonna drop me some energy shields. God, I hate how I have to do this every single fucking time. dealt 1,233 damage to the bear and it sure is a bleeding fucking mess right now as Dreva she looks at the bear and she she thinks about what she's going to do as she physically sticks her staff in the ground and um, she attempts to intimidate the bear nothing happens the bear just scoffs at her uh, sure let's go with that instead of doing that she she decides that she is going to jump atop her staff, leap into the air, and then she is going to cast Arrow Barrage twice at the bear. And with that, the bear has been thoroughly knocked into the air and it lands on its back you hear a very loud and cringe inducing crack when it hits the ground and the bear struggles to stand as one more whatever could do it in And with Dreva's last action, she decides to. Hang on. To measure this distance. Ah. She too is going to copy your walk and approach the bear.
and the bear is going to with the little strength that it has left it's going to attempt to roar at the two of you to which it succeeds and you all you don't visibly react to it but you do take note of the blood and spit that has landed by your feet and you kind of twist your nose up in disgust because once the blood hits the ground the, the ground the dirt looks like it's burning just a little bit or said and it struggles to approach you but it's going to take a swing at Yashua but when it swings its arm it sends out a series of spines and nails and a portion of its claw even as a ranged attack Oh boy, forgot how fast you were. <laughs> all right, all of that missed. And I just sidestep to the side. And after doing that, it just. The bear gives up fighting. It, it, it's just... It's just sitting there. Not doing anything anymore. And Yashua, it is your turn. I approach the bear. I just pat its head, and then I pull the trigger. Alright. Bear is the dead. Like, Yasha just patted its head, telling him, you tried. Did we get any bear meat out of him? Please tell me we did. Hang on. Okay, uh, for taking out that, oh, excuse me, for taking out the bear, you get 100 EXP, you hack off, uh, let's say four pieces of bear meat, though it does not look like it should be eaten in the state that it is in right now. So you should probably cook the hell out of it. Oh, I'm gonna fucking deep fry it. How many did you say? Four pieces? Yeah. Of unsanitary bear meat. Yeah. And the last thing you get is, uh... You, you pick up the piece of bear claw that it launched at you, and you decide to pocket it. Ooh, get a bear claw. Could turn this into a necklace. Right. And thus, you two continue on. Alright, before that, there's a bonfire there. I'd like to save my progress before we continue. Okay. <laughs> uh, no, like, see, no, like, I see, like, a fireplace, and, like, I want to see if there's anyone there. Right, right. So, 
move on over to the fireplace and you don't you don't see anyone well any humans rather but you can tell that people were here very recently and as you look around the area you can see scraps of food you can see uh, droplets of water along the ground you also take note of a bottle of very recently emptied spice and you notice you notice a coin on the ground said coin is of similar size but the engraving on it is different from the three coins you found yesterday and thus you decide to pocket the coin and upon further inspection you notice that it is a very deep purple Rabo, have you seen this before? Nope. I surely have not. It It's a really big coin, though. I didn't yeah. think they made coins this big. It's almost like you... It's almost like it goes inside of a door or something. Kind of like a key. Or maybe it's a, it's proof of something, whatever that may be. Well, to me, this doesn't look like a coin, but more of a metal, perhaps an insignia. Mm, probably, I don't know. I guess uh, well, I guess if we show it to someone, they'll know what to do with it. Maybe. And I roll out, like, perception and see if whoever was camping here left in a hurry. Uh, that or... wouldn't be... That wouldn't be a perception roll, that'd be an investigation roll. Uh... May I roll? Yeah, go ahead. Well... Guess I don't say that. <laughs> the only thing I will say is, well, guess it's worth something. We're not going to learn anything if we just keep on standing here. Let's move on. Okay. Drava takes up at the takes a look at the map once again just to double check their progress so far There's a shiny rock over here and she notices that uh, you're actually very close to where you all need to be heading to meet up with the contact and uh she said it should just be a few more hours going in the same direction that we are now. Shall we? Yeah, yeah, let's go. This way. Alright, so you two leave this area. And... You proceed eastward for a few more hours, long enough for it to reach the afternoon time as the sun begins to ever so slightly settle down a bit. But the further in this direction that you go, you enter into a forest and it progressively gets 
darker and darker so much so to where the only light sources that you all have are the compassion rings or the compassion ring that Yashua has and the bioluminescent plants in the area some of which are oh. very much overflowing with magic as it is shining so bright that it almost looks like a mist is coming out of them this mist does not negatively affect you in any way nor does it positively affect you it's just there's a lot of mana in this place and judging ever so onward you come across a cliff and looking down into... hey, hold on hold on hold on hold on did you change the map no i'm about to oh i was confused for a moment because i'm over here trying to picture what you said but i'm looking at the map i'm all like oh this is throwing me off i'm i'm, I'm doing my storyteller thing okay okay uh what was i right uh you all come come up to a cliff and looking down into that cliff you see a body of water a where we start here yes Uh, that does not look safe. It doesn't look safe, but this is where the X is or that Angela marked for us. As looking at the map and looking at where we are, the locations are almost one to one. Almost? Yeah, um, they're pretty similar. Yashua just looks at the map, then looks at the whirlpool of death, scratches his head. Oh, well, what the hell? Yashua does like the... Do you know how in uh, the... The, the PSO trailer, how, like, uh, the ARC's operators does, like, a backflip and jumps into the portal? Uh-huh. Yep, he does that. Okay. So, you leap in, in style. Drava leaps in, in style. And the rest of the party follow suit. And as you are pulled deeper and deeper into the center of the whirlpool... You see a portal with an eyesight, and you are, in within seconds, pulled out of the portal, I and mean, then pulled out of the water, and you are currently being pulled through this portal. There is no physical landmarks of sort, or anything worth taking note of aside from the strangely warm mystical energies that are both flowing through and out of the area almost as if there's a window open but there's another window open on the same side it's almost like it's almost like grass flowing in the wind. Are we falling continuously, or we're like you're moving? Or you're not. You're not necessarily falling, as it's more of like you're floating through the area. Huh. And what after what? feels like a few moments of this you come out the other side but you happen to notice that you're pretty
pretty high in the air. So, oh, shit. Roll acrobatics to see if you land on your feet. I'm not going for a landing. I'm just going to activate my armor. Roll acrobatics to see if you land on your feet. I want to fly, though. Okay. So, Draven <clears throat> screws up. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Drava screws up her landing and she lands on her ass. Meanwhile, Yashua flips as he's falling and he sticks it. Very well. I get a 10 out of 10, don't I? Yep. And once you all take a good look of your surroundings, you notice that the sun is bright, like it's morning time. And you look at the time, and about two days have gone past. Uh, I'm sorry, what? Look, uh, uh, Drava picks herself off the ground. Look, man, I don't have the answer for that. All I know is that it felt like we were going through that space for a few minutes. Damn, the time dilation must have been really bad there then. Either way, uh, at least we made it through safely my ass aside from not sticking <laughs> the landing anyway our contact should be here somewhere uh i have no idea where this place even is so i will have the i'm gonna go touch this wall Roll perception. Draven Someone is just enthralled with the area around her as it looks like some pretty crazy shit went down here probably a few years back. Meanwhile, you on the other hand, Yashua, you, you, that wall you're examining, you just happen to peer through and look around, and you find a space big enough to stick your head through, and you look to the right, and you see someone standing in this corner. And this person looks very familiar to you. Or that I I snap my fingers like to signal uh Drava. What? Will you find something? There's someone over there, but I can't get a good good look at him. He's probably the contact that we're supposed to meet. Uh Hmm. This This wall looks pretty high up. Why don't you fly up and stand on top of it and get a better look that way? Yeah, sure, I'll blinks twice. Why didn't I think of that? He just flies over. Hey, you're the one with the flying armor, not me. Yeah, flight isn't the first thing I think of. Yeah, fair enough, I guess. So, you are standing atop. I still can't get a good look because of the shade. Hmm. I approach. What do you say to this person? Well, I don't know. Chris, are you 
still in the call? I'm still alive, don't worry. Okay. Well, you're here now. Mm-hmm. What does Yashua say to a familiar face? He just yells at the top of his lungs. And just rushes the individual that's standing there. Chris, do you know how to p place your icon? No. He doesn't have one, so I have to give him one. Uh... Oh. Yeah. <sighs> uh... I don't even know how to make one. I thought we got all that done already. What happened? Chris, did you prepare an image for your character? No, I don't even know like how to I do that. I told you to do? For now, use this as a placeholder. Who the fuck? Oh, it's a rapper. Alright, anywho, Yashua just tackles him. But not like as an attack, but as like a bro hug. And he just, like, tears up a bit. No reaction from you? From me? me. Well, Let's it's see. your character. I know. I'm trying to think what I want to do to you. Well, you could punch me in the gut. No, I want to spark you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank God for the electrical resistance. <laughs> so, I'm going to roll my lo lovely little spark and see how much... Hopefully I don't hit a 20 on you. <laughs> Hope for the nah, lower roll. Okay. It's okay, I got the electrical resistance. <laughs> Hopefully your electrical resistance helps with that. Damage do I take from that? Uh, you're not taking any damage at all because this, this isn't a combat encounter. Zap! <laughs> Get off of me! <laughs> is this how you treat your old friend, Henry? Come on, yeah. bro! Yes, this yeah. is how I treat you. Asshole. Don't remember who I am. Jeez. I don't remember who you are. You were my personal mechanic for my fighter. <sighs> Jayva overhears the commotion on the other side of the wall, and she uses a wind spell to jump herself to the top of it, and she sees you two uh, doing whatever you're doing. There's a little... Scorch mark things coming off of Joshua over here. <laughs> Joshua just dusts off his armor a bit. Your hair is all static. <laughs> Joshua looks up at Drava. <laughs> so, you want to explain? who this is since you seemingly know him uh the moment yashua looks up he instantly just looks back down bad angle <laughs> i embarrassedly turn around <laughs> oh no she's not wearing she's wearing pants she's not wearing a skirt oh okay fair enough <laughs> up down here just be sure to stick the landing this time. Screw you, she says as she <laughs> jumps off from the top of the wall and effortlessly lands. 
Well then, I guess introductions are in order. This is Henry, a friend of mine, a really good friend of mine. We come from the same world. He was a he was a combat engineer. He was also my personal mechanic for my fighter. Mm-hmm. Oh. Pleasure to meet you. I am Drava. X Adventure recently became Adventurer again. And uh I'm assuming you're the guy we had to meet on our way here, yeah? Yes. Okay, and you work with an associate of... of... Yashua, did Angela say her name was Francesca? Yeah, but you could just call her Frankie. Right. Uh, according to Angela, you work with an associate of Frankie's, and you're part of our way into our next destination. Yes, I work with Lady Frankie. Cool. Well, with all that out of the way, let's let's get a move on. As she turns to the wall and instead of jumping over it again, she just blows it away with Eroga and walks right on through. It's a little bit insensitive, he says. <laughs> just walks by. <laughs> I'll follow right next. Right behind. Behind. Not on top of me. I'm not gonna give you a pick bag ride. <clears throat> so, as you wanna walk me along... Uh, Drava asks you some general questions about, uh, you know, what was it like waking up in a completely different dimension, uh, how was it adjusting here and whatnot, and, uh, questioned you on your method of fighting. So I ended up here through a portal and just randomly while I was working on uh, Joshua's ship, his fighter. And my skills are dark magic. Mostly elemental based. Oh, he was always edgy. <laughs> Wait, so you somehow got here without the Devourer killing you in your dimension? You didn't mm -hmm. get here the same way Yashua did? That's strange. Mm -hmm. Because that's not normally how people wind up here. Huh. Drava, she scribbles something in her pocketbook and then continues walking. So, how did you two meet? What's, what's the story behind that? We were in the same academy together. We yep. were part of the same unit. Yep, but I was the mechanic. He decided to take a more Pacifist. peaceful route. <laughs> Me, on the other hand, I was already a pilot since I was already in war zones at a very young age. Mm -hmm. The Academy was a second opportunity for me to change my life. Well, I met him in the process. We kind of instantly became friends after we uh, <laughs> kind of blown up half the building. That's interesting.
Well, you two seem like the best of friends, even if you yeah. do attack each other as a greeting. He's clinging, I'm not. <laughs> I don't like being touched. Come on, don't be like that. As I, like, slap you on the back. Don't make me burn you. <laughs> I see. Well then. Uh. I don't think it'll take us too much longer to get to where we need to go, as we've been on the road for a couple of days already, and somehow spent two days on the side of a portal, even though it felt like five or so minutes. So, have you gotten into very many encounters or fights with the creatures that exist since you've been here? However long that might have been. I haven't been here that long. When I came here, I met Lady Frankie and really only done very few fights. Oh, well. Okay. That's cool. As you all are walking and talking. Joshua is just like confused as fuck right now because. It means that he got here, like he left before the devourer appeared, but yet he got here after we appeared. And it's just throwing him off right now. Yeah, that that doesn't make any sense, but moving on. Uh, Dreva, she stops walking and... She has an expression on her face that something isn't right here. And before you question her, I would have you roll nature. So me, nature? All of you roll nature. Okay, so you all stop and sniff the air, and you can smell a very powerful scent coming from uh, your northwest, and it smells like rotting flesh, and someone made the mistake of falling into a vat of poison and as the smell gets stronger you can see a sludge creature come from behind this wall over here and uh it's not looking very friendly the first and, thing that Yashua says is gross and as that happens you can see several enemies coming from the rightmost area in this direction over here as they very quickly begin to grow in number and uh, they are blocking your only way forward so once I finish putting them all on the map Well, that's too big. That's huge. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't supposed to be that big. You all can comment about all the enemies that are showing up. Oh, jeez. Big rat. A green rat, a red rat, and uh, a spider and growth. Just that slime. Oh, 
God, that thing stinks. Drava is covering her nose, but she realizes that she can't effectively fight like that. So she very quickly reaches into her bag, takes some takes some cloth that she purchased before she left, and she makes a makeshift mask out of it. All right, it's uh, it's fight Wait. time. Who is this over here, though? Monster like Tamer? Well, it's human. Or not human, but humanoid. Give me a second. Uh, where is... Okay. All right, Rico, I'm gonna use Libra on this individual here. Okay. Joshua taps Henry's shoulder for a moment. Mm hmm. Dude. Yeah. That slime. I don't think my bullets could harm that. I'll let you focus on that one. Which slime? The little green slime? Or the. This one over big here. Squad monster. That big sludge over there. Okay. But yeah, Chris, since I have a uh, higher speed than everyone in the party, I, ha I have to go first. Yep, that's fine. I'm gonna start with this uh, red imp looking thing. Okay. Check the distance on it. Oh yeah, you're gonna get fucked. I do uh -huh. check distance. Hmm? Uh, there's a you rover the thing you can use if you look in the uh, upper left under the magnifying glass. You click that, and then you click your character, and then you drag out to measure. Feet, free movement, and four actions, right? right? Yeah, the red imp. Whatever that is. What's it by actions? Is it four actions or five actions? Uh, five. This is not an ambush. Okay. Oops. In that case... How do I erase that? Took care of it. Thank you. Okay. Mm 
Uh, fuck, I don't know how to add a bubble around. Uh, if you click the little cogwheel, scroll all the way down where you see the token aura, you can do that. Oh, I see it. Okay. It was 15, right? Yes. Actually, no, let's make the bubble red. You can see it that way. Go. So, for distance, is it the square in the middle or the edge counts for distance too? Uh, the edge. Edge, okay. So I only have to move up one for 20 feet. Yashua, you dealt 727 damage to this enemy. Alright. Hey okay, Riku, this is how uh this is how I'm gonna have it set up. The red bar is gonna be the shield strength, the green bar my HP, and the blue bar mana. Okay. Is that all right? Yeah. Uh. uh you need to adjust the HP on Shining War because it's half your HP rounded down. Oh, it's half my HP? Yep. No, wait. No, no, no. No, I read that wrong. I was looking at a different spell. Yeah, I was confused for a moment. I thought it was my... In yeah. my whole HP. My bad, my bad. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it is Draver's turn. And she is gonna set her sights on this cat looking thing over here. She is going to. She's gonna hit it with. Before she attacks, she is going to move herself further within your Shining Ward. And then, then she's going to hit it with uh, Ruin. And then she is going to look to both herself and Henry. And mm -hmm. she says... I hope you can pull your weight in a fight as she casts Faith Raw on herself and you. So for 10 turns, Drava deals 70 points of extra magic damage, and you deal 70 points of extra magic damage for 8 turns. So move for 8 turns? Once? Yeah. Okay. No, I don't know. Okay, so for her last action, she is going to cast. She's gonna cast Shellara on Yashua. Or you're gonna take minus 50 magic damage for seven turns. And for her last turn, she is going. Her last action, she is going to defend. Yashua just gives her a thumbs up. <laughs> All right. Okay. All right, Columbus. Let's see what kind of magic damage you do. So, let's see. I'm trying to think. <sighs> so I'm going to move up. Uh, oh, no. keep in uh, keep this in mind. Mm -hmm. You have five actions. Yeah. When you move up, that's an action. Each attack is an action as well. Okay. 
Well, I have to get in range either way, so I can't use anything from this far. Uh, what's your range on your spells? <laughs> 20, and I'm at 30. Oh, yeah, you gotta go up in range, buddy. <laughs> yeah, it's about there. Here, I'll measure for you. That's 20. 20. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's get rid of the slime. Now, since that slime is made from a corrosive material, you think maybe freezing it and shattering it will do, or just incinerating it? Are you are you saying these combat things in character? Yeah, in character. Okay. Ah, yeah. huh. and maybe and maybe freezing it and shattering it. Oh, that's might do good. That sounds great. I wonder. Maybe if I freeze it, you blow it to bits. Yeah, but I wonder if these creatures are like the uh, like those video games we used to play. You know, those slimes having a core. Yeah, hopefully. I hope. Sick though. Can I make My character page is the lock. I get stuck to the top left. How do I get it unlocked? What do you mean? It's locked. Like, I can't move the, the character page up, up the corner. Oh, just close it. Oh, no, no, I figured it out. Don't worry. They put it in a separate screen for some reason. Yeah, you could do that. Okay. Makes my life a little bit easier like that. So I could hit two targets with this spell. Ruler. So. I use. Yashua is like staring at the imp over here and he's thinking to him, or like he's saying to himself, I wonder if it's vampiric by nature. Look at those fangs. Okay, I'm going to use Blizzard then on the slime and hopefully I'll stretch out to the whatever that thing decided is. The one with the health bar? Yeah. Yeah, I think I that's a tamer. So I could hit two to him, two targets with it. Uh, minor magic oh, user well. has a variety of spells, and some of them have the capacity to summon demons to their aids. Yeah. Blizzard. Okay. So you're Ooh. hitting you're hitting the slime. Slime is the main target, right? Slime thing is the main target for your blizzard attack, right? Did you say I missed the Discord glitch? The slime is the main attack for the blizzard, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, are you are you sending it at him, or? Yeah, I'm sending it at him. Okay. Took two hundred and <clears throat> excuse me. It took two hundred and three points of damage. Mm -hmm. You could keep shooting Blizzard if you want. You, you still have three actions. Yeah. Shh, shh, shh. 
trying to think, because damage was. So is it effective to Blizzard at all, or no? Well... Because it is a... liquid-based... um... enemy type. Mm -hmm. It is taking... bonus damage... to... From Blizzard. Blizzard. And... Mm -hmm. Because... itself... it... the creature itself is... Now a wet substance, as the creature is now cold. Mm -hmm. Where is the thing for that? There should be a thing for that. Is it cold or not frozen yet? It is cold. It is not frozen. Okay. I'll do another blizzard. On the monster's next turn, he's gonna start taking burning damage because he's in, he's within the barrier. Oh no! I'll be right back. Gonna go get a drink. Yeah, okay. Okay. It took another. So how is that? Hang on. It took another. Uh, two hundred and seventy points of damage. And the target is now frozen. Okay, I want to try to shatter it. So I'm going to hit it with multiple hits. Uh, keep in mind that when something is frozen, mm -hmm. uh, their next attack will deal... D the next attack they receive will deal double the damage. Okay, I want to use Arrow Barrage then. Okay. Oh, oh, did you implement your buff on me too? Mm-hmm. Okay. There. There's arrow barrage on the slime. Those big numbers terrify me. <laughs> All right, the slime creature is dead. That was only three, so and plus my movement, one more attack or action. Hang on. Yep. Move. One, two, three. Okay. Yep. All right. Enemy turn now. And this. Wait, don't I have one more action? No. No, you used uh, two blizzards and two arrow barrages. I only clicked arrow one barrage one. once. It did that twice from one click. That's not supposed to happen. That's not supposed to happen. Hmm. Yeah, for some reason it did that. Let's see. Doesn't it do multi hits? A barrage? Yeah, it's it's one attack, but several balls of wind are hitting the target multiple times. So all those balls of wind are accumulating into one double. attack. Yeah, why did it double? I don't know. Just let me see. I'm going to use it again, just to check. That's using it properly. What did it do? Yeah, Just one. Once. You you probably double clicked it by accident. Hmm. Okay. That's fine. That's fine. Well, it doesn't oh, matter. You 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 I fucked up the slime you. anyway. Okay. So, continuing on. It is the. Mm -hmm. Enemy phase now. So this red creature is going to 
take a gander in Yashua's direction. And it is going to light its fist on fire, but it has to roll to hit. Alright, it's not hitting you, but it is going to approach you, but once it steps inside of the barrier radius, it does a house shining what works, it loses 100 HP. Bang. And it will look at Yashua, Henry, and Mel, I mean, and Drava. And it is going to... <clears throat> it's going to cast fire, but it's going to breathe the fire on the ground and use it as a flamethrower of sorts. Because they we, all y'all are getting hit. Alright. How AoEs work, you take that 207, subtract your speed stat from that, and that's how much damage you're gonna take. But 207 minus. Your speed stat? Mm hmm. Yep. Damage. I'm at nine. Oh, two. Okay. Y'all good? Yep, just yep. doing edits. I put it on my temporary hit points. There. My health bar should have changed a little bit. Okay. Uh, for <clears throat> its next action, it is going to. It's going to. Stomp the ground in an attempt to intimidate you all. So. Going to do this. Oh. Uh. Okay, and, uh. Can I get some charisma saves? Charisma saves? Alright. Sorry. Let's go into this stuff. Thank you, Charisma. Oh. Well, I have zero, so good luck on that, buddy. Six. <laughs> okay. So, Andreva, she takes a step to the left after having witnessed that. And Henry, you are, you've been intimidated to the point where you wind up backing outside of Shining Ward's range. Okay. And what about me? It just doesn't affect me? No. Yashua just flips off the monster. <laughs> I'm a pacifist! <laughs> well, yeah, your character wasn't known to fight on the front lines like I was. <laughs> I'm just a big bone guy that's scared of fighting. <laughs> Alright. So... That being said, uh, it it prepares to take another action, but you see the witch snap her fingers, and suddenly the the creature jumps backwards and stands next to whatever this ice-looking thing is. Ice golem creature. Well, our characters don't know what it is. That's what it looks like. 
<laughs> okay. Next up will be this ghost cat, and it is going to dive into the ground and effectively leave everyone's sights. It is it is not dead, you just don't know where it is. It, is there any way to put a marker where it dug down from? Where the hole is? No, because it it does not have a physical form, it's a it's a spirit. Okay. It so phased through the down. floor. It no clipped reality. <laughs> This dog-like creature is going to spend an action moving next to the witch, and then it is going to cast, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, it is going to cast... It's gonna cast Stone Daga from its mouth on Yashua. What? Got roll to hit. Ooh, alright, well. Barely edging out, but that's gonna hit you. However, because of Shining Ward being a shield for you, the shield will be taking damage, but Yashua will not. Watch is the shield taking damage. However, uh, the paralysis energy from the attack does manage to seep through so, I need you to roll... What's your charisma stat? I mean, what's your debuff resistance? My debuff resistance is at... 27. I need you to roll... A... 1d... 73. Alright, you are not affected by paralysis. Uh, the shield takes 162? Yes. Okay. it will spend making a copy of itself however in doing so it substantially weakened itself excuse me so by by doing that it has cut its own HP in half Cop and paste. There we go. And that is all of the dog like creatures' actions. And for the big blue ice looking creature, it approaches Yashua and it throws absolutely all concerned out of the wind as it walks straight up into the barrier and right next to Yashua. Oh fuck, this guy doesn't uh, give a shit. Quick question, Riku. Uh, uh 
Since I killed the slime, do we get experience from that? You get experience after the fight is over. After the fight. Okay. Just making sure. Mm hmm. Okay. So King is there. Mm -hmm. But he's gonna swing that claw at me. No, actually. It's going to stick its club into the ground, and from there, it will cast Blizzaga. Oh, fuck. Oh, jeez. AoE. Mm-hmm. Right? Y'all know how that works. And then afterwards, uh, because this can inflict cold, uh, once you do your HP stuff, uh, Henry, please roll a 1d8. What am I subtracting? Your speed from the damage. Okay. 263 from your speed. One sec, let me do the two... 63 on this temporary on this my golem's in the way I can't click on my health bar <laughs> Okay, so I have to roll 1d8, you said? You need to roll a 1d86. 1d86? Mm-hmm. Okay, how do I do that? <laughs> you type slash r 1d86. Slash r 1d86. Like, like that, unrecognized. As for me, it says it's not recognized. Did you type uh, slash R or R slash? Slash R. One D eighty six. Let me try again. Slash R. I'm rolling a one D seventy three again. Yes. Oh, you have to separate it. Okay. Okay, so Yashua. But which R space D one D? What? Yashua, you resist the cold. Uh, Henry, you become cold, and thus you lose fifty speed. For oh shit. I already don't have speed. <laughs> you lose 50 speed for 5 turns. And as for Drava... Excuse me. Um, 5 turns, you said? Yep. yep. As for Drava, she too resists the cold. Raised in the north. All right. All right. So moving on from there, it is going to take its club out of the ground and it's going to. Hold its club in front of itself, and <clears throat> it is going to cast 
protect and shell. So for so four turns, it has an extra ten defense and is going to take ten less magic damage. Mm -hmm. Three act. It has three actions, and then it's going to slowly turn its head at the witch lady and it's going to turn back around and it's going to move over to where she is standing but behind her and for the witch she's just going to she's going to snap her finger and all of the creatures that are surrounding her, they, for whatever reason, are ever so slightly glowing. That, and then she is going to clap her hands and suddenly that cat ghost creature from earlier is going to pop out of the ground and attempt to get a sneak attack on uh, Yashua. Right, it has to roll to hit him in the first place. Alright, it's hitting you. Hitting me or the barrier? It's hitting the barrier. Okay. 308. Barrier just suffered some chunk. Okay, barrier is now at 390. No. 310. No, wait, 910. I can't math. She then calls the cat creature back over to her, and it somehow morphs into a wrist mounted crossbow. What? And she is going to look at Yashua, and she's going to fire several ghastly bolts at you. What do I feel like these things will go through the barrier? Spectre piercing. Yup. Yeah. <laughs> uh -oh, wrong button. Born. Got okay. it. So, all four of those bolts are piercing through the barrier and they are making their way towards Yashua. Oh fuck. Retaliation! May I? It's a ranged attack. I'm if gonna do it. If your counterattack meets the criteria, you don't have to ask to do it. I just don't remember, that's why. Okay. Where is it? Uh. Who could play at that game, he says. Okay. Guess I'm gonna roll that damage then. That one, though. Okay, so from that, you take six three minus. Okay, so you are taking let me 
I'm gonna make sure my math is right on this. I'm doing this three times just to be sure. Okay, so you are taking 111 points of damage, and you reflect back 44 points of damage to the witch. Hey, so you kind of lagged there a bit. You said uh, 111? Yeah, you're taking 111 points of damage. Okay. And you reflect 44 of that back to the witch. Alright. After doing that, she looks to the rest of her allies with a twisted grin on her face as she raises her hand and she opens and closes it and they all fade away and they form they form a light around her and she now has a barrier equaling a fourth <clears throat> me equaling a fourth of all of their combined HP together additionally you you hear and you feel a loud rumbling coming from nearby and as the footsteps get closer you can hear demented and staggered breathing you can't necessarily tell where the noise is coming from, but you happen to look past the witch and you see a very large creature making a beeline towards the party. Very large creature sees the small. Oh my god! Alright, phase two of this fight, y'all. Uh... Although, also, the witch's turn has ended. Okay. So what is it, the big monster's turn now? Yep. And... It is going to stomp right inside of the Shining Ward. And it is going to straight up punch Yashua in the face. Oh, okay. And allow me to uh, do the HP subtraction because it messed up inside the barrier. How much damage you're taking from that? I'm doing math. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, he took a good chunk out of me. So did the crossbow specter creature combine into that too? Yep. Okay. So she doesn't have the crossbow anymore. Nope. Is the creature ignoring my defense? It's just hitting me directly? Uh, no, it is not ignoring your defense. It just ignored the properties of the barrier and punched through the barrier to punch you. 
So yeah, he's ignoring the barrier. And just hitting me directly. Yeah. You said defense, so I assume you're talking about your actual defense stat. No, no, no. I meant the barrier. Okay. Two, Freaking Yasho's like, oh, my maulers! <laughs> and with that, it is going to. I like how everything's targeting me first. Well, you're in the front, and I got scared back, so. We'll see. <laughs> it is going hey, to. I have no friend. Point a finger at Drava and out from that finger comes a uh, Gravaga or Gravity 3. Oh, they pulled a Frieza. <laughs> it did the move I want. Okay, so Drava, after getting hit by that, is uh, visibly irritated, as she did not take too kindly to being hit with some shit like that. As you can, you can see her angrily grip her staff in, I guess you could say, anticipation for payback. Will this be the session where she uses Dragon Slice? Moving on. And for its third action, it is going to... It's not going to do anything. It's just going to stand and remain where it is. Alright, Joshua. How do I math this one again? Thirty-five plus your max MP divided by two plus an additional one sixty. Thirty-five plus my max HP divided by max MP. Okay, max MP divided by... Two. Okay. Coming back to Max. Oh. 
right? Okay. Now then. I was going to take you in for questioning, but you're not very nice. So... One, two, three, and I will cast Shining Ward on Henry. Okay. Does that warm me up? <laughs> it gives you an energy shield. So you see what I have around me? You get that too. Okay. So the barrier magic in front of it. Go to the selected targets. Riku, I was attacking the witch. Uh huh. Has HP equal to the selected target? Round it. Yeah. Okay, so. But what would that calculate? What? Calculation for the shield. It's your health. Like, it's whatever your your current health is. So my current health is a hundred. And 64. So I get a, a shield of 764. Yep. Yep. And Yashua, you completely annihilated the witch's barrier. And you dealt 180 and 94 points of. HP damage. Damage. <clears throat> Driva, it is her turn, and she gets the ever so devious idea to. Activate that gravity ring that Greg gave her, and she uses it on the large alien looking creature to make it as light as a feather. Oh, she's gonna racket ball it. And she is going to cast Aroga on its feet. that up real quick and okay, so that's 754 and then for her fourth action she is going to hammer it with arrow barrage and lastly she is going to reverse the gravity effects of it and send it flying towards the witch. So before I do that... Or just the... <laughs> I'm also happen to be right in front of the witch. Oh no, it, it's not gonna... not gonna hit you. It'd be hilarious if it did though. Well, let's see if that becomes a possibility now. Lucky. Lucky. So she, she swings her arm and swings the large creature into the witch. Both entities collide into the nearby wall. The witch is very thoroughly flattened as the giant 
alien creature takes an additional 500 points of damage. Did the witch just fucking die? Yep. And at, at, at the witch's death, the creature shrinks in size a little bit. And Drava says after doing that, that'll teach you to use some gravity magic on me, you ugly fuckwit. Yasha just like, like his head slowly creaks, turning behind just to look at Drava. Remind me not to piss you off. <laughs> he doesn't say that, he just thinks that. <laughs> right. That is her turn. Okay, so that means it's my turn, right? Yep. Okay. Since I'm still frozen. You're not frozen, you're cold. Okay, cold. I have to get in range, jeez. So far you, can behind. Move, you can move as far as you want, it's just gonna take you an action. Yeah, I know, but I don't wanna go close to it still. Okay, you could just stand behind me since I'm always taking all the hits anyways. Actually that's right where twenty is. It's right behind you. <laughs> Joshua just says this to Henry when you well, if you stand right behind him, that is. I stand behind him. Okay, Yashua just says, this feels too much like the old times. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So I'm going to... Does Henry know Libra, Riku? Nope. Nope. Okay. Okay. Well, spam. I'm gonna spam everything I got on this thing. So I'm gonna use... Wait, this thing's fused with a bunch of things that are weak to fire. Is it? The ice golem. The specter might not be. And that stupid dog. Well, if you think about it scientifically, any organic is weak to fire. Yeah. <laughs> the mm. in character. <laughs> and it's a big thing, too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ashton just looks at Henry, nuke it. Okay, I'm gonna use the fire spell. Cause the there's a chance of burning it. So let's do that. And now we'll fire one. Yeah, if the attack connects, roll one d two. For a chance to apply burn to the enemy. I keep forgetting that. The regular fire one and elemental fire one are different. <laughs> You're thinking about ember. No, no, I'm thinking about basic fire one in a spell list that you can learn without having to be the class. Ah, uh, okay. They're so, different? Yes, they are. So his doesn't burn, or...? His does. If he okay. gets a 1d2. Okay. And I got it too. <laughs> Bird! <laughs> Where's the 1d2 roll? D2. Flash R, 1d2. 
slash r two. Uh, you probably looked at the other row. Go. Then do it. Did it? Slash r one d two. Rolling the dice. Oh, it's a one. Okay, you could keep shooting fire spells and keep rolling it <laughs> until you break yeah. it. I still got it. Hmm? What did you say? Oh, like I'm asking you to, like how much damage does the burn status do per turn? I don't know. It deals. Every time they move, they lose 2% of their HP. Oh, that's scary. So I'm going to do it again. Oh. <laughs> wow. Okay. Don't even bother rolling a 1d2 because that that's a crit. That's a crit. He's on fire. <laughs> can I make the fire bigger? No. <laughs> of course you can. You see me fanning the fire? <laughs> I have the arrow bar on. <laughs> Bombard it with wind. <laughs> Riku, will you allow it? It's if he uses wind with fire. Well, well, what? I, have to, I have to do the math for the. He's still trick. doing the damage. Okay, so. You think, is it, will you allow this since the monster's on fire and he uses a wind spell to make the flames to fanning the fire bigger? Hmm. It doesn't matter. I'm still going to use the wind attack because it's my highest damaging spell. It makes sense scientifically. That's what I'm asking. <laughs> Yeah, but I'm not thinking about this scientifically. Roll a 1d20. 1d20? Okay. Flash R. It's an 8. Alright. Fires will not go larger after you cast their operators. Okay, let's see. Can I try once more? Sure. So another one D twenty? Yep. And I polish my glasses. It's dirty. A twelve. There we go. Still unsuccessful. Okay. Still have to cast the spell though. Yeah. How many spells did you cast already? One, two, four. Three, four. That's it. That's it. Okay, no. so. From all of that, you have dealt 1,348 damage. Oof. Oof. You're a glass cannon, Chris. Plus, he's burning. So, if he does the action and attacks our energy shields, he's going to take even more plus the burning. Teamwork, Rick. Teamwork. <laughs> well, that's what our that's what our characters are based off. We always do teamwork together. <laughs> You're lucky I didn't use fire early. <laughs> Well, he's ignoring my barrier, so I don't know if he's burning from it. Oh, the longer it stays there, the every time its turn come up, comes up, it's going to take that 100 HP damage. Uh, Wouldn't it take okay. 200 now because he casted it on me too? Uh, no, that does not stack. No, it doesn't stack. 
No, the no, no. The only reason why I cast a shining word on you is to give you some extra protection at the same time in case something targeted you. They would also burn. I got one thousand something because of that now. But he's going well. He shrunk down and lost his power, didn't he? Yeah, since the witch died, he got nerfed a little bit, but I don't know by how much. I don't know if he could still go through barriers. Well, it is going to light. <clears throat> wow, English. It's going to leap ever so slightly into the air and come crashing down to cause you. I'm going to attempt to make you all stumble in place. Who? All of you. Yes, sir. So, okay, he's I gonna mean... jump here in the middle? Well, no, it's it's jumping in place, but okay. it's slamming the ground trying to make you all stumble, so I need strength saves. Copy. Okay, so strength? Uh... Okay. Do you see the uh, the box on the left? Mm -hmm. Where it says strength, dexterity, uh, constitution. <laughs> nice. Oh my god. Oh my god, Drava. Drava's <laughs> just rushing in and punched him. <laughs> oh no, 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 no. So, she completely ignores what it did, and in response, she is going to approach. She's going to raise her foot and cast whatever magic on it. And. They won't get burned too from doing that? No, she's an ally. No, no, him. For him jumping, he gets burned. He, he didn't jump out of the barrier. No, no, from the burning. Every action, right? No, it's every time it moves. Blaze is every action. Burning is just oh, one okay. Okay. That's a good spell, Blaze. Oh fuck! I, I want to learn that one. I want to learn that. <laughs> Except, you use Blaze on my bullets? No, that that's a status ailment. Ah. Yep. Yeah. Uh. I need more elemental skill. <laughs> Uh, I'll get somewhere on the next town. So <laughs> from yeah, so in response, Dreva she raises her foot and she slams it down on the ground so hard in response that it stumbles and falls backwards. I was not expecting to hit a nat twenty. Goddamn. Do I stumble back too? No. And she, she just, she has an expression on the face that reads, try me, bitch. <laughs> and because it was knocked backwards and it fell, uh, its turn is over. And it will spend its first action of its next turn standing yeah, back yeah. up. Hmm. Yashua just says, oh, some dangerous thunder thighs you got there. She gives you a, an extreme side eye. Henry turns around and says to Joshua, she always this strong? <laughs> Joshua just shrugs. <laughs> Not that I know of. However, I however I do like to side over. <laughs> So is it Yashua's turn again? Uh-huh. I'm gonna cast Libra on the Xenomorph looking thing. Okay. See it's health. I should have done that since the beginning, but Yeah, it got I was the... wondering why you did it. <laughs> no, because it, it got the first turn on us, that's why. You should... like after him appearing, I thought it was gonna be my turn. I was like, nope, it's monster turn, I'm all like, oh, there goes my life now. <laughs> I'll let Riku first type whatever he needs to type down. Uh -huh. Well, I strategize what to do with this creature.
has 1,000 health. If you weaken it down enough, we could probably kill it. I could completely destroy its defense if I want to. Can't you bombard it and not even move from your spot? Buddy, I have the longest range in the entire party. <laughs> I wish that fire attack warmed me. I could be standing <laughs> over here and just snipe him. Snipe him! Put him out of misery! <laughs> Because that's what I am. I'm, I'm the team sniper. Though I do need to update the... I, I, I do need to get a better sniper rifle though. There you go. 5k HP when it's summoner's line. It's weak against lightning. It's weak against lightning? <laughs> uh. Yashua just elbows Henry. You got any thunder spells on you? Oh yeah, you don't. <laughs> Electrocuted you from the start. <laughs> really? You didn't feel it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> My armor has thunder resist. All right. Should I do with you? Um, all right. Oh, that's how much health it has. Oh, I thought I had more. Okay. All right, Chris. I'm just gonna break, just lower his defense as much as I can, and then you just finish it off. Mhm. Mm I forgot to put in this conditional defense. All right, nice crit. So fifty seven. my turn. Yeah, add all that up. Fifty one hundred. I like how fucking Riku uh was Wait, gonna say something doing... about conditional defense, and then he just. Interrupted himself because of the crit. Don't you have one more action? You didn't move. No, I no, I used an action to use uh, Libra so I could scan him. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Forgot about that. I could have used the grip. Actually, I don't know if Riku would allow me to use the gravity ring to increase the mass of my bullets for extra damage, but nah. I'll do that next next session. I'll play around with the ring. Uh, so with that, you dealt... 686 Four points of damage. Putting it down to 1,000. And you hold its defense by... 40 for me at this part real quick so uh it doesn't only lower its defense but it lowers its speed too yeah. this is a uh this is a common thing i've been doing for the party whenever we do boss fights I always lower the defense and slow down so it's easier for us so for limit break, what level do you have to do for that? 
any level. Any level? Yeah. <laughs> you just have to have the energy for it. What's our energy on right now? Oh, I figured you guys were keeping track of that yourselves, but y'all have been at 100 for a while. Okay. Uh, Alright, Chris, <laughs> nuke it. I <laughs> love Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, I think it's Dravo's turn. Then it it's your turn. Really <laughs> okay. So she is going to begin charging her limit break. And in her limit break, she is going to cast. A <clears throat> oh, excuse me. She is going to cast a She's going to put Earth, Fire, Ice, Wind, and the gravity spell into it, since gravity is technically considered dark magic. So I'm gonna do that. Why'd I get two ones in a bro? Uh, two ones in a row, are you um, serious? Okay. Oh, well, looks like you might be able to finish it off now. I thought that Drabo was gonna just destroy it. Not it's dead. <laughs> she blew it to hell and back, and there is nothing left. And for visual effect, where's my explosion tool? Uh, There's yeah. just a crater on the fucking floor. Ooh, where's it, where's it? Here we go. <laughs> Whenever I see those explosion effects, it reminds me of those, uh, those like <laughs> no, 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 do you know like those 1990s uh, arcade games for the bullet hells when you destroy the boss yeah. and you see, like those explosions? Uh huh. It makes me laugh all the time. Okay. Boom, 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 and then just a massive explosion. And now we hear the victory music. <laughs> Okay, so for emerging triumphant from this fight, slime witch creature. Yashua yeah, just snaps his fingers and the barrier is gone. You all, Mr. Pate, before I say this out loud. Make sure I'm doing this right. All right, uh, you all gain 2,000 EXP, and oh, geez. Yashua, that is a level up for you. Woo! What about my 12 now? Yep. And 
And if I'm not mistaken, I do believe you get a new ability at 12. Ah, you do. Oh! Let me go to the docks. Let me type the y'all's rewards. How much is experience is it per level up? 5,000. 5,000. Rising shot. Melee attack. If you are ever knocked prone upon getting back up on your feet while standing up, you drive your guns into the closest enemy while firing two bullets at them. So this is good when I get knocked out. Well, it's not when you get not. You say knocked out or down? Knocked down. Okay. Yeah, because this is one of the few attacks I have in the campaign that lets someone attack as they get up. You can still use it outside of that, though. Oh, my bad. Trying to edit this. Gonna have to do the modifiers for that. Does everybody get that? Yeah, I love yep. how you call you called it a xenomorph. <laughs> Riku, you, you got me good. That you, you you got me good there. That was the goal. I just randomly call it a xeno because of its fucking head. Fucking Xeno had a scale. Ew. Yeah, sure. It's like carefully trying not to burn himself or holding onto the scale because it's you know it's a Xenomorph. Uh, no, it's it's not dangerous or anything. It's just it's cold and dull to the touch. That acidic? Okay, cool. Oh. If you cut it open, it's acidic. That's dangerous information. Yeah, I can just like cut it open and just splash it in someone's eyes. I hope I'm allowed to do that in a... in the campaign when there's an enemy, if I want to blind them, just Cut the scale and throw it at him. What does the the witch's crystal do? Uh, for now, it does nothing. It just glows. But if you take it to someone who can do something with it, it may become beneficial for you. Okay, sounds good. Can we trade with our friends certain items? Uh, you all have. For the most part, the same shared inventory. The only things that are different are character-specific items. Okay, so what was I doing with Rising Shaw to read the description? Oh, you already did the rising shot for me. Yep. He had it ready. Riku's fucking fast on the draw, man. Oh, it's 15 feet. Okay. Dude, dude. Alright. So, that being said, you all. Y'all gather your bearings, and you look up at the sun. The sun is begin to set. 
and amongst the three of you, you all agree to get a move on before it starts getting dark. And Yashua wastes no time announcing, uh, grab on, we're gonna take flight and get the hell out of here. And when you reach the peak of your ascent, you can see the outline of a city in the distance. And you kick your falcon armor into high gear and you take off towards your destination. Alright, hold on tight! And the longer y'all go, you see a spot where you can land and you just so happen to look over to Yashu and he looks pretty exhausted. And once you all land, you all are over here, by the way. Uh, Yashua is taking a moment to catch his breath after having to fly for so long and so fast. And carrying two people, no less. <laughs> yep, also carrying two people. Uh, you see a, a machine-like creature as it stands before you all and it says identification please and with that the session for today will end